coming up on the next episode of the Celsius Pod. Like you were, you were fighting so hard as like that's my movie of the year for six months, and now eight other movies have passed it. Hey, Beck, uh, why is your shirt the same shade as Minecraft Steve's? Because that's my Halloween costume. I'm going as Minecraft Steve. So the whole thing is like, it's chill. There's a bunch of children. They're at an orphanage, and they can't leave the fence, but. At the end of the first episode, we find out the orphanage. Guys, before this episode starts, I have an announcement. Uh, so yeah. notice the outfit that Nicola is wearing, at least the sunglasses. Um, so I went to Savers with Nicola for because he has Spirit Week this coming week, and he had to get some stuff. And while we were at Savers. I looked at the shirts, and the first shirt that I saw was the Nightman yeah. Cometh. Oh, that's, that's from Always Sunny. It is from uh, Always Sunny. It was a very good find, actually. And that's why we go find. thrifting, because thrifting is fun as hell. The Nightman Cometh. Go thrifting. Uh, that's where the heat's at. The heat. A very, a very fun shirt that that I have now. So that's that's the starting announcement. Mm. Um, All right, so the weather right now in Serbia, 62 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, so yeah, that's what it is in Serbia. Oh, sorry, it just, upla- it just updated. It's 54 degrees Fahrenheit. 62 here in, in uh, that, we Alabama. got 48 degrees. In Boston, wow. Yeah. Wow. Here it is. Sorry, guys. Um, no problem, it, Uri. It is 39, so getting colder. Interesting, wow. Back Why are you frozen? I'm frozen? No. no like no. like the movie Frozen by Let Disney? It Go. Let It Go. Did so you back- know that song is actually about shitting? Yeah. So mm-hmm. anyway, Which moving on. Princess do you align with? You seem the like first topic Ariel. to talk about today, Invincible Season 3 has been Mermaid. leaked. It's coming out on February okay. hold on. Wait, 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 Nicola. Hold on. Pause. Beck, how have you not seen The Little Mermaid? You know, I'm kind of like watch anything good. It's like not I'm really kind of holding right. off onto it until like the perfect moment. You know, it's so, like a girl also, or something. Here's, here's the thing: I also don't think that Beck aligns with uh, Ariel. If we were to like align him with somebody, Jasmine. Mm, why Jasmine? Because no, he's blue, I guess. Yeah. She's barely. I mean, I, she wears blue, but like. Yeah, exactly. She, he's the I, genie from Aladdin. I'm going for an Aurora, someone who has to be taken care of their whole life, and All in right. the immediate time Sleeping. they're left on their own, they die. I'm going to be honest, that's that's. Best I, mean, I don't <laughs> sleep, like, at all, you know? I feel like yeah, that fits you, very poorly. Oh, yeah, I only you took, like, a four-hour <laughs> nap before the podcast, okay? Four hours? <laughs> I take max two hours any time I take a nap. Fact, that's any longer really than that, that's just you. a whole sleep. What do you mean sleeping is bad for me? No, Harry? those long naps are bad for you. That's like saying fentanyl is bad for me. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> anyway, okay. Nicola, continue. I'm completely fine. Anyway, I think it's a good thing. This Sunday, every year in San Francisco in October, we got this thing called Fleet Week, where the U.S. Navy comes. Actually, most of the military comes, but mostly it's like the Navy. The Navy comes and they roll their ships through the bay. Okay, shut the fuck up, Murray. The na- the Navy ships themselves through the bay. <laughs> they float on through the bay in their ships, and yes. they have a whole like it's a whole event the entire week. You can go on the ships, you can talk to the people, you can um. The, the main event is Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, which is the air show. The blue Saturday. Angels. I could not go. I forgot why, but it was fine because it was anyway canceled on Saturday because it was too f- cloudy. Monday, today, I could not do it either because I had the podcast and because I didn't have time to go to this SF and stuff like that. Well, Yesterday, cool. though, I did go. And I brought... You bought merch? My, no. Nikon, my Nikon D7000... With an 18 to 200 millimeter lens on it. 
This is my camera. I've had. I actually. Hey, I is just. Is more of a film guy than us? He is more. Oh, none yeah. of us. I that's think he's that's on a camera. camera. Me and Aiden don't own a camera. No, he's, he, that's, that's not a. Photo a that's, not a that's not a. That's not a film camera. Yeah, that's a photo camera. Oh. It's not for. It's so, not for video. Yeah. I mean, it can record no, video. No, no, with on. The camera's yeah, from 2000, so. He's redeemed from last week. Yeah, because uh, awesome. it's a camera from the 2000s, so the video isn't good. But I can show you some of the photos I took because they're very, I got some, I'm really happy with some of my photos. So, here is one of them. Nice. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, no, you sent me the photos. They're really good. Here's another one. Wow, another airplane. You was eight. What I love is that I took these. This is like also one of my favorites. Ooh, these are pretty good photos. I, would, I took them all I, I with would, my camera. I'd see these on the newsletter, I think. Yeah. yeah. I took all these photos and it was a really fun day. Mostly the annoying part was getting to San Francisco through the traffic and finding parking. And then we had to walk down a super tall hill to get to the water and then walk all the way back up the hill to get back to the car. That's why you take the train. Yeah, we were going to do that, but because my friend was landing at 11 o'clock and then he would have to go home and like, un and like uh, do stuff at home before we left, the first train we would be able to reach was 12.55, which mm -hmm. means we would make it to San Francisco at 1.45 and then it would be another bus because the Caltrain station is four miles away from the uh, place, but there is a bus that goes there, but the bus takes 45 minutes as well. So that by the yeah. time we got there, it would have been halfway through the Blue Angel show and we would have missed uh, it. Okay, Ooh. that's fair. So that's I was like, I'm just going to drive. I can do it fast. If we go, if I drive, we can get there an hour faster. Yeah, because so you I drive did that. really fast. Yeah, that and because we don't have to wait for the bus and all that stuff. Yeah, um, fair, fair. So I drove. That's, fair is the thing that you pay for the bus, actually. Yeah. So <laughs> I drove. We got there. We walked down the hill. We got there like... Like maybe at two o'clock, the Blue Angel started at three o'clock. Um, we got there. I found first of all, I was stuck like underneath, uh, like in the crowd. So I was taking photos, and some of my early photos all have the fences and stuff because they have fences for like the the private viewing where like you have to buy a ticket to get in. Um, but then right before the Blue Angels came, there was this like statue, this like monument that's like a memorial to this one guy, and the side of the statue has like two little bumps on it. And I was like, nobody's standing there. What's stopping me from just climbing on top of that so I can be above everybody and take the photos? So I did that. It's multiple security passed by me. They never told me to get down. So it must have been fine. So I was standing on top of the statue and I got some really good photos that way. Because not only was I higher and above everybody, it meant everything was out of the way. And it meant I was closer to the planes over my head. Because he's really I'm short. He needs to like boost himself yeah. up. Yeah, my, uh, yeah. But I'm very happy with my camera. This thing can record video. I actually don't. I know. I actually figured it out. I did tell, uh, was it uh, Aiden that this shoots at six FPS? I was wrong. It can take bursts at six FPS in mm -hmm. its standard shooting mode. You can also do a super fast shooting mode where it will go like super fast because it can have a maximum shutter speed, but I believe one over eight thousand, which is like mm -hmm. super fast. Um. Mm -hmm. For I just think it's like the the quality for the videos is not as good because again this is this is a camera from the uh, from the early like from the two thousands yeah. so mm. but it's not a I really like this camera it's a really nice camera it used to be my dad's now it's mine and right. I am now becoming a full on photography student cool hey Beck uh, why is your shirt the same shade as Minecraft Steve's I because that's my Halloween costume I'm going with Minecraft Steve are you. He's gonna get oh. all the girls. Wow. Oh, I, I might so not that, dress up for Halloween. Oh, you better. Back, I, I, I back, I'm doing it. I have a I have a costume right there. Mine what are you is doing? getting. I'm like I need to go I to my reveal it yet. You know what I'm? Okay. I know what I'm doing for Christmas for Halloween. Is it your banana no, costume again? No, it's not. So my friend group, our whole thing is we get together and we eat food. So this year we're going wow. all as fast food mascots. Guess who I'm going as? Grimace Shade! I am Grimace. going as Grimace. On, I, I am going as Grimace. Do you have like the, the whole like mascot no, costume? I am, or you I just am want to buying, I'm going to order it off of Amazon. Nice. But I'm going to go as Grimace. That's my, that's my costume this year. You're not going to go as Femboy Wendy? I'm not going as Femboy Wendy. Bro, okay, guys, let's get into like... No, that was a segue, actually. That was a segue, actually. Oh, okay. Because... Uh, on the same day that me and Nicola went to Savers, we also went to Wendy's to get the Krabby Patty from Wendy's. Yeah, I did, did see that. that. 
Now, here's the review. Uh, it is just a burger. It is a regular burger. Uh, it's it's literally a burger. There's nothing special about it. However, the uh, peach or the pineapple, uh, the milkshake, is very good. But it was just a burger. But I had never had a Wendy's burger, so it was it was surprisingly just a good a good burger. I've never been to a Wendy's. I've never been to a Wendy's. That was yes, that was yeah, my first time was- at Wendy's. That was the first time getting a Wendy's burger. I've been there. I went to Wendy's one time and got the chili. So my review of each thing would be that the burger was just basically just a Wendy's burger. And yeah, Wendy's fair. burgers are pretty solid. Um, the fries is just Wendy's fries. Wendy's fries are pretty solid. Um, and the thing, the star of the show is by far the pineapple, uh, the pineapple frosty. It was actually really good, and I hope they keep it as a permanent menu item because it was actually so good. It was very good. A little, a little food review from Celsius Pod. Yeah, a little food. Mm-hmm. Now I guess we can get into a little bit of news. I mentioned it in the right in the beginning. Um, so somebody leaked the trailer for season three of Invincible. So that means we now know that the Invincible season three will be coming out February sixth, and wow. there will be no mid season break this year. Thank God. That's actually less than a year from when it ended. So, so it means they're now doing it faster than than last time. And with no midseason break, it means we don't have to deal with waiting another four months for it. Fun fact, you know why they did that? The show was ready to go. They didn't have to have the midseason break. Amazon made them have the midseason break because they didn't want to have a gap, a month gap between Invincible ending and the boys starting. Oh... I can see that. They wanted that Invincible sense. to end, and then the next week, the boys to begin. So that's what they ended up doing. Ah. Um, but this year, they're not... Uh, I don't know if, if the trailer is still... The leaked trailer is still up. I'm assuming because it's leaked, they'll probably post the official trailer, like, soon. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, they might as well do it anyway. I mean, the um, one thing that I saw was, like... What they could have done was they could have just, like, kept the... The animated part the same, and then just edited the last section because that's a lot easier to change True, to yeah. like just change the date. Um, but I mean, definitely like the animation in the trailer is real. Like no one would go into that much work to animate a fake trailer. Yeah, I no, it's definitely a real trailer. Yeah, but it's like like it's a lot to be edited, so it's it's definitely the real trailer. But I mean, you can see it's not fully finished, so yeah, that's it why it's leaked. But uh, so so that's the big news for that. Then I guess now we can start getting into what we've been watching. I wonder what they're gonna cover in season three. I'm pretty sure. So last season ended basically just in the big like teasing the Invincible War. So this season's definitely gonna be Invincible War. I'm pretty sure what make what would make sense is the entire season covers Invincible War and it ends with I think I think it would end with Conquest coming down. You know, like the very iconic panel of Conquest descending on the planet. Beck knows. I don't um, know. Yeah. But or you're the one that owns the actual comic. Yeah. 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 But it doesn't have that in it. And that would make a lot of sense helps. because the Invincible War is a pretty big arc. I don't think they could squeeze it a lot more. The only other thing I think they could do is actually I said this before we began that they could do mid season fight be uh what the fuck are you doing, Ari? What the fuck? Is that the a mid- penis? <laughs> so the the whole thing they could be doing is they make the invincible war like to the mid season and then the and then the uh carnage fight is like the mid season fight um however i was also maybe what they're going to do is the last couple episodes like the episode 7 and 8 or maybe just episode 8 is like the full uh conquest fight and then episodes 1 to 7 is the invincible war but i think if they were to do that they would anyway just have conquest be the next season. Why do Invincible have more episodes than just eight? I feel yeah, like I hate that like everything has now switched to like the eight episode formats. And I understand like each episode is an hour long and like for especially like an animated show, it takes a long time to animate that. But still a lot of these shows could do so much better if we had a lot more episodes. Like if each season was the entire arc I feel like and then wasn't rushed because like if they didn't have to squeeze so much, I feel like it would be a lot better. Yeah. But it's just kind of the just what you have to just do with your dealt with. I think now we can get into what we've been watching. 
Well, right. I think start off. You're talking since what are you what are you even watching, Nicola? Yeah, I guess because I'm already talking. Let me start off. Um, I made a little list so I can remember. Um, I'm gonna start off with some of the stuff that nobody. Well, it's not that nobody else has watched, but like I'm the only one that watched this week. Um, so one thing that I know 100% I've only watched, like the only person here that has watched, that's me. Dexter. Civil War. Oh, no. Like, Aiden- watched, no, I meant, no, oh, he didn't yeah. watch it this week. I meant like I'm the only one that watched it this week. Oh, yeah. again? You watched it again? Civil War. I watched it again because it was on Max and I was like, oh, might as well watch it. There was nothing else good to watch. And I'm like, I like the film. Let's watch it again. Watch it again. I think uh, it was a very good film. I love the cinema. I mean, it probably has some of the best cinematography. Yeah. And uh, sound design of like recent movies. And uh, I love how it uses chromatic aberration. And like you can tell, I think it's really good that the, that the star of the film is cinematography when it's a film about uh, journalism and yeah. like photo yeah. photography. So that's what I really love. And I love how they interlace the still shots like of the film. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's so good. So and I mean, I really like it. It's still kind of off-putting to me. Like, I mean, I, I know it's stereotypical of me i did the exact same thing when we watched it in theaters with beck lions but when the plane comes down or more specifically when the oh helicopter comes God. down and oh starts shooting its gun it actually just is puts me off so badly because the gun is so different compared to the real gun and the real gun would have sounded so much better i don't know why they changed it wait guys i just Let's checked this is like the weirdest ass leather box curve i've ever seen it's because most of the movies I see, I give four stars because I only watch four star movies. Yeah, you only give four stars to things. Bro has because not seen Ryan's World. True. Because yeah. like, here, I haven't seen it. Okay, but and to be fair, look, I, I only I have. I'm so sad that that's not the worst movie we've seen this year. I know. Because yeah. here's the thing I've also only seen on my letterbox, I've only done 47 movies. That's fair. And that's I only, true. I don't watch, I don't like go out of my way to watch really bad movies. And it's like, so for me, good movies are like four stars. Amazing movies are five stars. And it's like kind of, and I, I, it's kind of hard for me to get four and a half stars because it's like, you kind of got to go. That's a worse scale than Bex. What do you mean? Hey, yeah. Um, can we talk about Beck's scale or at least his oh old one? Oh my god. Because, so I rewatched uh, Toy Story 1 and 2 this week. Great movies. Great movies. In fact, what happened to your high school musical rewatch, Aiden? I got I got ham now too. Is he official ham? There's no official ham, actually. Would he be There's... like ceramic or something? No, he's plastic. Um, but I put I put all my foreign change in him, so he has money in him. So, right. um, but rewatching the movie, I gave it. I gave first movie five stars, second movie four and a half stars. Um. And Uri, I looked at your rating. You gave it uh, four and a half stars, the first movie. Uh, yeah. Beck gave it... Um, Beck, can you tell us what you gave it? What three. did you give it, Beck? A three, three it. for Toy, Toy Story, Story 1. Toy three stars. That's crazy, Beck. And then I said, this is crazy that he's reviewed it this way. And then he said, that's my old rating system. So can you explain... Why yeah. is three can stars you explain the your difference old rating between system? Your, can you explain the difference between your old rating system and your new rating system? Because we thought through it, and we're pretty sure it's the exact same thing. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. so explain it. Here's what happened. So please explain it. When I first made my Letterbox account, I was like, every film is a two and a half. And then I slightly moved them up, like, incrementally. So it was like... You know, like, you know, like the standard, like, curve where it's, like, what? where it goes, like, most films are here, and then, like, for Bro was saying a normal curve? A yeah, normal, normal bell curve? A normal curve. A normal bell curve. Yeah. And it was like that. And then, when I, like, actually started watching films for, like, the different years, um... Like, it's been two years. What do you mean two No, I mean, like, for, like, the 2024 year. Oh. I that one I started doing like the ranking and then with the ranking I like got more of a sense of like what each of them is and like tries to like even it out curve wise so like instead of being like a normal curve they're like all even flat what like fuck is this same scale? amount of this films is like so each. fucked up just review them based on just Mac, it, you know that okay I 
Leather Box isn't out of three stars, it's five stars back. You know that, right? I know. Okay. I'm, I'm really confused. Like, you are not good enough at math to do this scale, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, but it's really hard because, like, I don't know. Like, when I watch, like, Joker 2, I'm like, okay, wh what, it, what is this movie? And then, like, saying? I give it, like, a 6, but I'm like, but also, like, Toy Story is a 6. I'm like, those are nowhere near the si same quality of film. Wait, back, back, back. So I, I need to go back and, like, fucking change it because it, it's back, crazy. Back, back. Yeah. That made no sense, I'm going to be honest with you. That made no sense at all. What is your rating for Toy Story now? Yeah, Toy Story we'll now? Uh, I want to say, like, four, four and a half. So, okay. wait, why is it... How did it get like that? Because I'm I'm really confused on the bell curve. Yeah, maybe because... <laughs> what do you mean you rated on a bell curve? The bell curve meant, like, there were only, like... Four films that were five stars, and then there'd be like eight films that were four and a half stars, and then like sixteen hey. that were like three what? and a, that was three like four stars, and like thirty two that were like three and a half, and like imagine like that scaling. But what back, back why? Not... Why? So you're saying you could only allow yourself a, a finite amount of movies to be in so, certain? Well, spots? I was okay. I was. See, the thing I like to do... What he's trying to say is that 68% of the films fall within one standard deviation of two and a half stars. 98... No. 90... 88.5% fall within two standard deviations. And 995 fall percent fall within three standard deviations. Like, okay. This was going off, like, I had done, like, all my ratings on, like, the IMDb website was where it was tracking my film before letterbox and in that one the only reason i like had it like that was so i could sort by like highest star ratings and just see like a ranking of like films to recommend so i was recommend films based on okay but like if someone was like, like it's that easy but if someone is like like what's a film that you want i'm like and i'm like blank and i'm like okay let me look back at the list of be and be like what films have I what what films have I given really high ratings to? You know, you can just remember that a movie's good. Yeah, but no, no, like no, it's not. Do like, mean you have to look at a list to make no, sure that it is you not like, like it's not like if someone asks, "Hey, should I watch this movie?" It's like, do you have a movie recommendation? Yes, you always have one. Just yeah. always say Whiplash. Okay, I do that, but then what happens if they've seen Whiplash? Palm Springs. Pick another movie from your four favorites. They, yeah, I use I do go to those four always, but sometimes and I've seen all it's like four my parents that are like, like, I don't want to watch an animated film. Animated films suck, so I have to go like. Back, 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 back. Why are you friends with this person then? What do you mean? You said why would they ask you for a rec? I don't know. You don't seem like you'd like this person. If they don't like animation. No, this is my parents. This is my parents. Okay, parents. <laughs> to your parents. <laughs> Yeah, my parents, they're like, they like, don't like a lot of animated stuff. So I'm like, okay, I have to find something drama. You've seen dramas, dude. You've seen a lot of dramas. Okay, yeah, but then do I want to give them, I'm thinking of ending things, a film about suicide? It's hard because films that I find to be good, I don't think are good recommendations, you know? So then what's the point of. Looking at your star rating because so it I can like, like see I can look through the films that I've liked and then think, hey, would this be a good fit for them? I, I mean, I, okay, Mikla. I'm going to be honest. No when comments. you started talking about percentages, I thought you were going to talk about golly people. I was like, no, I was, no just, I was just thinking back to AP stats and thinking it was just like the normal called probability curve and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mikla, what so, else have you been watching? So I guess I'll talk about the other movie I watched. Everything else I've watched has been shows. And that would be... Beck, uh, Beck is going to love this one. Beetlejuice 1. Yeah. Yo. Why does Beck love this one? You mean I'm going to love that one? Not Beck? But Beck loves Beetlejuice 1. He I just love it. the first. It's, it's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, he yeah. watched it. It's, it's he watched my Night at the Roxbury. Name a he character went, in Beetlejuice 1 that's not in Beetlejuice 2. Winona Ryder. 
So that's the actor, and she is in both movies. So okay, the oh, dad. I can, I can actually, I can actually do this one. Yeah. How about you answer? Uh, no, no, Adam and fucking, Barbara. No. Uh huh. The 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 I'm the, actually the, so the, mad the, they're not in the second movie. Alan Whoever the, the repair guy is, you know, like the guy that like goes in and is like, I, we need the feng shui here, you know. I doesn't he know. fucking die at the end of Beetlejuice? I can't remember. <laughs> no, he doesn't die. Anyway, so so Nicola, how was Beetlejuice the first one? Uh, I gave it four stars. I think it's a as my as my uh, letterbox says. It's my I like favorite it. movie. No, it says amazing anti suicide PSA because the movie basically is an anti suicide PSA because like the goth daughter is like Linda. It's her name's Linda, right? Lin- Lydia. 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 Lydia's Lydia. like Lydia's like. I don't like my parents, but I like these ghosts. So I'm going to kill myself to join them. And the ghosts are like, don't kill yourself. The afterlife is fucking ass. Yeah. And that's Ooh. why I think that's like proves. And it's, I also like the, the funny joke that um, they go down to get their ticket. And then the, the person is like, well, if I knew how it was going to be, I wouldn't have done this. And she says that both of her wrists are slit. And then that comes oh, back yeah. later. It comes back later because the ghost guy is the 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 fat interior decorator guy, the jolly interior decorator guy. Yeah, is uh, is like they say if you die if you die by suicide, you become a uh, service worker in the afterlife. Yeah, oh, back your it's fuck. just a, it's such a, such a well written movie. Yeah, and it's just a really funny and then, yeah, Beetlejuice does kind of is really good in it. I Honestly. Beetlejuice wasn't even my favorite part of the movie. I'm not even no. gonna lie. He's like he's he's, he's like an incredible not, part of the movie. He's a good part of the movie, but he's like by far not even my favorite character or like in it. No, all. Adam and Barbara are like Adam and Barbara are characters. so good, and that's why I'm so mad that they're not in the second movie. I know. Hey, yeah. Aiden, I have a question. Does he feel more a part of the movie in the second movie or the first movie? Yeah, oh, he's I, way I, more. Part I already of the movie know that he's like the the star of the second film. Yeah, yeah basically, because mm. he feels like, like a really big part of the trailers. second movie. I gotta watch the first one. Um, um, yeah, no, that's it. Sounds good. Um, Nicola, you gonna watch Beetlejuice too? Uh, once it comes to streaming, because I don't know how else I would watch it. Well, Aiden has I, a car. <laughs> you have a car. Yeah. Aiden, do you want to go watch Beetlejuice? Is it still in theaters? I think, I think so. I, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Keep we it in for Halloween, right? I guess I, yeah. October. Maybe. I'm, I mean, I would probably, I would go see it with you, Aiden. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd watch it again. I'd rather yeah, no, see guys, they have showings for ten thirty tonight. If you want to go, I'm not going after the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, anyway, no, I would, I'd rather not yeah. go. I, anyway. I, I, I'm going to see four yeah. movies tomorrow. Anyway, now oh, I can get oh, to the yeah. shows. Now I can get to the shows. I'm first going to talk about the two shows that I don't think anybody else has watched. Sure. Um, first one, 100 percent is tiny is the tiny bit of Dexter I watched. I watched a couple more episodes of Dexter. I Again, like I have the same thing as I said last time. Writing is kind of ass, but other than that, it's not a bad show. <laughs> That's just like, it, it ruins the okay, entire sorry. book. Again, I really have to say, the dialogue is not amazing. <laughs> but other than that, it's a pretty good show. I looked at her with my blood, and I thought, this was her period stain. <laughs> one oh. of you girls are on your period. Mind telling me which one? That it's would be me. me. I love Josuke. Can't believe right, he hasn't seen like that. Met. Uh okay, so that would be Dexter. Next thing would be Agatha because I don't think you watching Agatha. Well, don't, there was like don't a talk, big don't reveal talk this Agatha. week, right? Don't talk about yeah. it yet, Nicola. I t- oh, I how many episodes have you seen then? I just haven't had time to watch it. I've been watching. You've only seen the first episode so far. I've only seen the first and second episode. Yeah. Well, Nicola, okay, so we have good? two. You have two that you. Met. It's still a good show. Yeah, it's definitely not bad. And the I kind of don't understand what the ending of the, the I guess episode like I understand it's a big shock and it's like a, it's a confirmation of something but like I don't really get it like I don't really understand what happened but I don't know like well, it's not like there, a show twist it's like if you're a fan you're like oh my god is it's this character actually yeah I know and I got that but it's like why it's should Mephisto? I care it's not yeah. Mephisto I they do. They did name the, drop Mephisto in one of the first two episodes. They did. Is it Aubrey Plaza's death? It is not. It is. Okay, it, that it, was relates, it relates to the child. To is the it teen. that he's Agatha's son? Uh, he, no, like, we actually get a reveal to that. Son? in the. Oh, we do get yeah. a reveal to that? Okay. It's that. It's that she's not. It's not Agatha's son. It is the Scarlet Witch's son. It's Wiccan. Wiccan. I thought we whatever. already knew that. 
I thought we did too, but apparently not. It's Wiccan. Anyway, that's the big reveal. I don't really get it because I don't know. I maybe haven't seen enough of the comics, but I also just didn't really care. I also wasn't really paying attention a lot. So once we got True. to like the last 10 minutes, I was kind of stopped paying attention. He loves the But show. Uh, other than that, not that bad of a show. The show's kind of fine. There's a broom chase scene in like, the, I think the beginning of the fourth episode that's like not great. The, like, and the CGI isn't amazing for that. But I mean, other than that, it's been a decent show. Okay, well, I'll get there. Then I, get there. I can talk about the second episode of Dan to Dan. Dan to Dan? Dan to Dan. I started watching the first episode. Yeah, Dan to Dan, the second episode is basically, they are, so basically, uh, so, 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 basic, so, so, uh, so basically, so basically, <laughs> So basically, uh, so I forgot basically. the name of the people, but the girl takes the guy back to her house so that they could change because all their clothes were ruined in the last one, in the first the episode. Aliens and the dead as the aliens. <laughs> then the guy, it's like me when I try to follow the fine shoddy into her house, and then her ancestors light me on fire. Oh. Um, so he mm. gets light on fire, and she has to go put him out. And then they realize, oh shoot, the reason he's being lit on fire is because there's a barrier to keep evil curses out and he's still cursed by the Turbo Granny. So they take it off, they go inside, they go change, they bond a little bit. He's like, he's like, he's like, oh, I don't deserve to be your friend because I'm too socially awkward compared to you. And he's like, and she's like, this is why you have no friends. And his response to that was like, and his response was, bitch. And so then they start fighting. But there's, then there's, there's such a it's such a funny friendship because they both yeah. clearly want to fuck each other so bad, but they both hate each other's guts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, fuck it. they're middle schoolers. Yeah, hey, but like, <laughs> no, but I'm right. I'm not wrong. I mean, I I understand what he's saying, but still, it's yeah. Um, but uh, then the doorbell starts ringing in AIM in E major, which means that it's not the normal. It's not the grandma. It's not the grandma ringing the doorbell. It's the evil spirits. Oh, no. So they go but outside. it wasn't actually an evil spirit. It was an alien. Yeah, so they sneak out the back door and they're about to leave when the alien casts domain expansion and no. traps them all. Literally wow. casts a domain expansion and traps them all inside. Go a Revival in Don Don episode two? <laughs> Dan to Dan, yeah. <laughs> so the, the alien sumo wrestler uh, monster spirit thing traps everybody into this box. And then the, uh, the, go- that's the boy... That's surrounding the property. That's just surrounding the property. And then the guy is like, oh shit, what if I don't lose my mind and I just let the curse take over my body? So he does that. He gets a major. He gets cool, sick ass clothes from the from the curse. True. And the, and then the grandma, he, and then his the grandma gives him style. Basically, yeah. yeah, gives him style. Oh, I forgot to mention when he got lit on fire, his hair became very puffy, and he basically got a uh, what's it called? He got like an afro, basically. Yeah, yeah, he got a perm. And then he gets turbo granny body, and he gets like this new sick ass look, but. He's a total downer, dude. Like, that's exactly what he says. I also don't know why he starts talking like that. He's, he just gets super depressed. Yeah. Because his he mind gets is super depressed, but he, talk, but he talks in, like, in a really weird manner. He's like, yeah, he's like, yo, he's like, dude, yo, I want to kill myself. I'm a total so downer. Bad. And I'm like, bro, you are not black. Stop talking like that. <laughs> uh, no, because he's like, it's not even that. He's like, yo, dude, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. And I'm like, let's 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 take it back a notch. Um, so then he gets his ass whooped by the alien because he still isn't that good. So then the girl has to solo and she gets pounded by the alien. But wow. that's part of her but that's that's part of her plan because it also Wait, meant pound, that you the, mean sex? No, by no, pound he, I mean a fist into her body and she looks no. he takes that. No, wait, she no, so takes hang on, Nicola, because that wasn't much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by what by pound i mean punch her repeatedly into a wall okay, okay. i mean domestic abuse yeah. um Whoa. they did try so, to rape it, her in the first episode yeah so. so she somehow tanks that shit and yeah, i don't really it, know how she it makes such that. a big dent into the wall that they're finally outside the property and she can slap the the spell back on 
and um, it makes the alien burn. Then they pop out and they're like, damn, what a crazy cool adventure. And then she passes out and Turbo Granny takes over. And that's the ending of the second episode. And oh, Aiden, you've then? seen the third, yeah. right? I yes, have seen the third, the third because that's what the movie was. It's gonna come out on the. Th- it's gonna come out on Thursday. I'm gonna watch it, and then the next week is gonna be the fourth episode. And then I can start watching the show again. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nick. So is that it? That's all for Dan to Dan. There's one other thing to watch that Uri can also talk about. The penguin. The, the penguino. El penguino. Okay. Let I can I can start by saying I think Uri can talk about this because I've been talking so much. This can be a segue need- into what. And I, been yeah, watching. I need so, to feed my dog, so I'll be right back. So, so yeah. far in The Penguin, I would say this has been the best episode of the show for me so far. Because it provided a lot of, like... I Actually, episode three was pretty good, maybe on the same level. But um, I would say this episode really provided a lot of backstory for our characters and how they are, where they are in their main time. It shows the sort of the backstory of, why, of how Sophia Falcone sort of what became the hangman sort of character where she was, spoiler alert, you can skip this, but um, she was framed by her father, who was the real hangman killer who killed her mom and a bunch of hookers at the Iceberg Lounge that we saw in the Batman. Mm. And Nicola, I don't know about you, but I really, yeah. I, they really fleshed out her character. And I thought, I, I, I felt really empathetic towards Sophia in this episode. I think yeah. that's just because she's hot and everyone wants to fuck her. Okay. Okay, back. <laughs> I mean, he's not really wrong, but she is hot. But no, but this episode was like, so, like so breathtaking because like we got to see how she became this sort of character and like she was very abused by her family in this regard. But it also it's her it's her episode, but also kind of like shows how she was sort of like you know she was like they sort of like bring she thinks of this idea of like you know Oz was supposed to be loyal towards her and like. But the way she kind of treats him, like, yeah, she does feel a kinship towards him, but she also treats him like trash by, like, saying, she was, like, shocked why you, when there's a party back, and, like, she's saying, yeah. he goes in to tell her something, and she's like, what are you doing inside? Ooh. Like, he's a, like he's a yeah. fucking house-broken dog or something. Yeah, but that was also, like, after the whole bad thing, she like, when she got, uh, I was this after was the whole. This no. Before. Yeah. This I remember how the way it was happening is she was nice to him, then the reporter came up to her and that kind of, and yeah. then, and then she was still nice to him. Then this is, this what more- happened is she met when she started to, when she finally met with the porter and she started doubting stuff about the family. Then she started being mean to, because she was like already that. Then she started being mean to Oz. But it Wait, and so then that- this is, this is the sister of the guy he killed yeah. in the first episode, right? Yeah. yeah. And the guy is also, the guy cares about his sister, but he's also an asshole to, Oz. And Oz is not a good guy by any means at all, but he's been treating yeah. tr- like tr- been treating like trash by these people. And like, if you show Oz respect, he'll probably show it back to you. And so they, it shows like they created this their own monster with this disrespect towards Oz. Yeah. And it's a really in- intricate character study. These two, this episode, it was so beautiful, and I thought it was a really interested perspective. And now that she knows what he did. To her brother, because they revealed in the beginning of this episode, it's, we're gonna see like a Ooh. war battle between Sophia and the penguin, sort of where I think it's gonna um go towards like till the end of the show, because it's a mini series. So I predict we're gonna get to a level where the penguin becomes sort of more the the penguin character by the end of this show, and in Batman Two, we're gonna see him become like the new like mob mob leader of the. And of the, the Batman world. Two is confirmed, right? Yeah. Yes. It is confirmed to be a movie that will be coming out at some point. Like 2026. Um, but no, I'm really enjoying the show. I don't know about you, Nicola. I've been having a fun time watching this Yeah, show. I mean, it's, it's been a good show. It's, so, it's a really nice sort of crime drama HBO Sunday type of thing that I've been missing. So it's a nice, like, exploration. Beck, I suggest you watch it. It's uh, Yeah, it's pretty- I mean, I do kind of want to watch it. It's just I haven't, like, had the time. And that's fair, but um, it's a really sort of fun show. It's like I, I just like, like a DC characters with a new spin on it. Not like the Joker fully a do or, um, but this this is a pretty fun version of the Penguin because it's a different Penguin than we usually get in like other media where it's like he's more aristocratic in other media and more like um, you know, he's like on. Yeah. But here we have more of an underdog story. 
with the yeah. penguin. That's and what they took really... his name for that, right? Yeah. Like they, they didn't and, want um, to... Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, uh, it's 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 a really sort of fun show, and I, I'm enjoying it. I think my theory is that actually Sophia is actually the hangman, but she's like, diseased mentally but like, no I think, I think that it is i think i mean it's pretty we know that that the yeah. dad chokes he, people that was pretty he, obvious I mean, that's from how the he last from batman one selena kyle and yeah. batman one yeah, yeah. so it's like kind of i'm like i definitely think i think it's like what we are seeing is true i think she was kind of framed for it because the dad because we know that's the type of person falcon was and then um and then it's what happened to her in in arkham that kind of made her go that made her unravel, yeah, as she now, said. Beck, this is yeah. the, sort of the end of episode four. She does a really, really... I won't spoil it because I think you should watch it, but she does a really, really big move that sort of puts her in the entire power. So now it just become her versus Oz throughout the entire show. Moving okay, on. Okay, yeah. And like, so okay, I feel like... Yeah, me, tell me if I'm wrong for this, but like from the first episode, it kind of seemed like Oz was like a very low level member of like the criminal family but yeah he somehow has grown over these past couple episodes to like be able to actually take on uh sophia i mean in somewhat i mean he wasn't entirely low level because I, definitely in the past he was like just a driver but now he's like cuz he cuz he wasn't in, in charge of the iceberg lounge in the batman movie so he's not the lowest level he's He's still probably pretty in contact with the family, with the leaders themselves. But so he still has his own like sort of people. But he is he is like an underdog level, low level type of character. Got it. And so it's really fun. It's a it's a pretty fun show. It's like a nice exploration of the Batman universe without actually having Batman in it. I think this is the way you're supposed to do it when you can't get like the big guy himself. Like the way that um Do you think Batman that they're gonna have a cameo of Batman in no, this season? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe post credit scene, but I doubt I, like anything yeah. significant. I think Robert Pattinson costs too much too much money. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. But I was like thinking like I they feel like they could do it, but at the same time it would be too much money. Yeah. And um Speaking of another movie with Robert Pattinson, the lighthouse. <laughs> No. But no, um, but like things like you know Morbius and like Man and Web and like stuff like that, that they don't do it well because like they're just like thinking the sort of pseudo thing where it doesn't really fit. Like it would be an interesting story without Spider Man, you know? Okay, yeah. No, let me tell you something that was really weird because I was watching. I I was in previews for for Saturday night today, and I got a trailer. Come on, and it was like all red, R rated, and it was like. It kind of felt like it was going to be like a John Wick movie for like the first part, but then it would turn out it was actually Craven the Hunter. Oh um, yeah. And like, it, it feels like did they do like a rebrand or something? Because they're now going like full R rating, which seems weird, and they seem like they're going for like a darker tone. Mm. I don't know. I think so, uh, because like I feel like I feel like they're real. They might be trying to maybe trying to fix any mistakes like for because they've they've had such a bad track record of this sony universe that they're trying a wholly new direction because like even venom was supposed to be r-rated but it ended up being like pg-13 and i kind of fumbled it yeah so i feel like they're trying a new direction i don't think it's going to work i think craven the hunter will be another adam web yeah but, but uh, legitimately well, every, i am excited for, for venom 3 <laughs> Yeah, I, I will uh, watch Venom three and Craven the Hunter, but yeah, I will. Yeah, watch wait, both, is yeah. We, is Venom three out when we're like for things? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I want I want to do it as a pod. It comes out in October, though. I don't know if we will be able to for Venom uh, three. It's October twenty fourth, so we'll probably be in during Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah remember, but... I'm gonna be in Copenhagen, and yeah, me we'll... and and me and Nicola are gonna watch it earlier than that. Okay. Yeah. But if, we, if it's still in theaters, we can always just watch it together. And again, like, yeah. First, but, um, yeah, again. But um, I feel like Venom the three might be the last kind of version of this Sony universe. I think after yeah. Kraven the Hunter, it is like, called like, the Last Dance. <laughs> I feel like it might be the end of this universe because I don't see how this can continue. Uh guys, what other um D list villains can the Spider Man have? I, don't know, Black <gasps> I would watch a Black Cat movie. 
Oh yeah, Vic, you would. Yeah, so um, if they cast Sydney Sweeney in it. Yeah, well, they already cast Sydney Sweeney in a in a Spider Man. Was she wasn't she Black Cat in that? Or... No, no, she wasn't. Um, let's I see. think they could. I think they could do Black Cat in Spider Man Four. Probably. We get, what if we get a yeah, because he's he's broken up with MJ. We yeah. get a chameleon movie, you know, a shocker. Be, movie. A shocker we already movie. have shocker. A rhino movie again. Rhino already exists in the same movie as Shocker, even. Hobgoblin? Hobgoblin? Well, that, no. That's, that's just more, great. That's just Harry. That's just Harry. Uh, um, yeah, let's not go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> um, Madam okay. Web 2. Madam Web 2. Okay, what else? I guess, Nicola, you have anything else? Or- nope, that was I- everything I've watched. I guess I can talk a bit. Um... I watched Superbad again. Classic. I didn't oh, see that on your letterbox. I really want to watch it. You haven't seen it? I have not seen it. You've not I seen it? it? I watched it for the first time last year. Beck, it is really good. It's not as amazing as everyone <laughs> says it is. Okay. Yeah, it's like a, it's like it's a pretty it's, good movie it, though. It it it's a, it is awesome. I do think McLovin, it's a he's a great character. I a bit overrated in like our popular culture, I think. But um it's a good movie. Yeah, it is good. I I agree. Um, but Beck, I'm really shocked you haven't seen it. I feel like you've you you've seen it. You should have seen it by now. Yeah, I probably should have. I mean, I've started it before, but I've never like gone all the way through. Uh, I was yeah. I was gonna watch it. Um, after I watched um, what was the what was the one we had to watch for film class? Book Smart. Because I was like, that was fun, and it was described as the female super bad, so I should watch super bad, you know? Um, I made a list on my letterbox movies I want Beck to watch. Yeah, and you did not put Goodwill Hunting on it. <laughs> I gotta put that on. But, uh, yeah. Let me see. What is, what is the, what, how you should I make a make, I'm gonna make an Aiden list, too. I'd love to see it. I will, make an, I will make an Uri and Aiden list if you guys want. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying um, to find your back list. It's not even here. But um, yeah. So that's what I've sort of. I watched Song of the Sea. It was okay. It was okay. I didn't like it that much. Song, you know? yeah. I have wanted to watch it. It was fine. But it was fine. It was, it was okay. I think it was. I mean, really are you are you, a, are you a fan really of good, those like movies? Not the biggest. It was a good animation, but I'm not like the biggest. I wasn't not invested in the story that much. Ah. Uh. Um, it was sort of mythological story and like very animation focused, which is fine, but not my cup of tea. That's um, fair. Um, what else? And then I watched The Apprentice, but I'll talk about that, that next week. Yeah, we have to wait for that. And, Sorry, guys. That's my so bad. I've officially cooked. Like now, I just gotta fix a few beats, but I've basically beaded out my entire outline for my "It's Always Sunny" sex script. I'd love to nice. read it. Right? So I'll have to be. I'll be building the scenes, the be- the first few beats into more like expanded outlines for a class. But um, you know, by the end of the semester, I will have a fully finished "It's Always Sunny" spec script. As nice. fully, I mean, like thirty pages, or how long? Well, it's something is like twenty minutes, so it's probably like twenty, twenty-five, something like that. Got it. Yeah. Um, I'm also of, I've, I'm also writing yeah. a script for a class, my uh, American pop culture class. We have to develop a TV show based on a genre that we picked. So, and you, what did you pick? I, back? I picked teen drama, and right. then I I just sent the script to Uri because he was like, "You never send me any scripts." And so I'll, I sent I will him, read it after this podcast. Yeah. And he will. Let me tell you something. I it's a it's supposed to like con- fit the themes of teen drama. So if it's cringe, that's because what is that's what it's going. That's for. fine. My main thing will probably just be the way you say it, like formatting, like just the way yeah. you tell the story, all that shit. Ur- somehow Uri's pissed at me for inclu- for not including periods. I mean, do you guys include periods in your writing? Uh well it depends maybe yeah no maybe. the thing is guys he has like <laughs> characters like like write say line like say their dialogues but he just doesn't end them with like periods 
And they're supposed to end like with periods. Because there's quite literally a giant space that goes to I Yeah. I don't know. I it's just like like, are you in a class teaching you screenwriting format or like have a book or something? No, this is this is I'm learning this all like by myself. I I have not taken an actual writing class yet. Mm. So I'm just going off like what I I Google what I need to do. Like I don't know, like I like I Googled how what do you what do you put in the script and you say you want to have text on the screen? And I still don't fully realize how to do it, you know? Right. Because like um, it's, the conventions are really weird. Yeah, but once you get into the hang of it, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um what else? Aiden, what are your what are your solos? Um, well, we're not talking about piece by piece. Uh, I rewatched the Toy Story movie. I rewatched the Lego movie. That movie is really good. Was that in preparation for piece by piece? No, it was just free on YouTube. Okay. Uh, and I, and I was bored in class. So that movie is very good. But did you guys hear about the Robbie Williams biopic where he's going, it's going to be a CGI monkey instead. I did see, yeah, I did see that. I, I, did, I got I got a trailer for it. I heard apparently that the extras and actors in the movie didn't realize that it was about him, nor that he was supposed to be a monkey. They kept that a secret. Wait, who's Wait. it about again? I don't know. Rob, I don't know like who this person is. Robbie Williams. Monkey biopic. Robbie Williams, okay. Do I know this guy? Do you? What is the song that he made? Um, Name one song. Angels, Millennium, and She's the One. Okay. It seems well, like people are going very different directions for biopics because they realize it's so overused. Yeah. I think that makes it more interesting, though. It does. Yeah, like, I'll well, watch... A biopic about a monkey shredding on the guitar. Um. Okay. Aiden, anything else though? Any TV shows? Oh, let's talk about uh, Abbott for a quick second. Yeah. So I find I caught up to Abbott Elementary, and pr- the generally uh, pretty one. good show, right? It is very good. Yep. I really uh, do like it. Yeah. And season so season four first season episode came out, and I'm excited. Obviously, there's a sunny crossover later, but overall, I yeah. it's a pretty fun show to just like watch casually every week. It's like a nice little yeah. comedy. Like it feels very like Office Parks and Rec vibes from the show, mm-hmm. so it's very fun. Can I say like uh, one thing is that thank God Gregory and Janine are finally in a relationship that's because what I, was, I was gonna say that's my least favorite part. Of every other season is the oh will they or will or they, they, they? Will they, will they, they be, when they're obviously going to do it? And I it was just like, oh my three, god, they were gonna get together in season yeah. three, yeah, because that felt like the natural. And so I was really, really mad for a second when Janine said like it didn't work out with Gregory, but then it, I'm so glad she said just kidding because I could not handle another I season actually, of will they? Be- will- I actually believed it too. I was like. Of course, this show fucking drags out. Just be together, guys. Just be yeah. together. Thank so, God. Uh, so the only thing that would be bad if they is if they like do a, a separation thing at some point. I don't think they will though, but they probably will. Uh, I do really like like how this new season is kind of like okay, we kind of lost a lot of what we were riding on before in terms of like villain ish. Um. But yeah. so they just introduced white people as the villain, and I think that's very funny. Yeah, <laughs> the golf course. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The golf course, yeah, and which is so, good. Yeah, and um, I'm glad to have I'm glad to have Janine back at the school because I didn't like that in season three how she wasn't. Just like the district, it was like, eh, it's not the best yeah. storyline. Season three was probably yeah. one of the more weaker parts of the show, but um, yeah, I think they're back to like the regular formula. I really hope they do this thing where it's like. Because, like, in Friends, Ross and Rachel split up and they only get back together at the end. I wanted, like, more of, like, Brooklyn Nine-Nine where the, or, part, or, like, The Office where they get together and they grow as a couple and, like, get married yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Next couple of seasons. Because it shows that I want to see growth with the characters and that really, like, shows, like, yeah. when they get together, what if they have, like, a child or something like that, you know? I, I think the, the show really is strong with its character writing. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Um, and so I, it's exciting to come back to Abbott Elementary and, you know, just enjoying time with these characters. Yeah. I think pretty solid first episode for season four. Yeah. So, so we're going to have to... Is the golf course plot line like they're going to demolish the school and build a golf course? There's like one very nearby that's kind of that's bringing in a lot of white people into West Philly oh. and also kind of messing up like plumbing and electricity around the school. I wonder if they're going to introduce like the Sunny character into that plot line. I wonder. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Like they like Frank goes golfing. Maybe. I don't know. That I don't, could be funny. I don't think, that's one maybe. way they can bring the white, the white, it's always sunny carriers into the show. That's true. Yeah, uh, but I did, I did send that one thing uh, that said that Charlie was kind of the inciting character. Oh, so that'll be fun. Let me here. Let me go look at it. It's it's the producers about. Um, the Sunny crossover, and then also the gentrification storyline. Right. Um, let's see. What, what I like that? about this show, really, is that they're able to sort of, like, more than, I guess, Parks and Rec in the office, they're about, I guess, Parks and Rec, kind of, but they're about to bring, like, they, they're able to bring, like, delicate, like, real-world issues in sort of a comedic way in the show, in, like, sort of Definitely. a funny way, and I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, it says it'll take up a full half hour, it looks like. Uh, looks like there's a A, B, C, and D story, uh, and then all the characters should be showing up, even mm-hmm. though like Caitlin Olson and Glenn Howerton are both shooting different shows right now. Yeah, but they're they're gonna uh, do, they're doing like reshoots, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what what the guy what the like producer saying is Charlie Day's character has a pretty significant storyline in our episode. It was kind of a joke at first. And then, um, and then that the two shows should cross over. On paper, it feels like they'd be a real tonal mismatch. Then Rob and Charlie came to our writer's room, and we hashed out some broad stroke ideas. From there, we emailed back and forth uh, beat sheets and then an outline. They were super game for everything. All those concerns that we had about the tones of the show butting against each other were all alleviated the second we started filming with Charlie. Mm. So, okay, Aiden, let's theorize for a bit about what this yeah. episode could be. So um, Charlie is looking looking to be a very important character with four side with a, a B C and D plot. Yeah. So I, I think the gang is gonna get split up with the characters. I think each like like I think maybe D and Dennis are like the pairing and they're a little but yeah. Then Mac will have his own thing. Frank will have his own thing. Then D and Dennis. I think I, miss- I think it's gonna be Charlie with Janine and Gregory. Yeah, I think that Frank and Mac Melissa, is, maybe. I think maybe, maybe because he does have a thing for for uh, for uh, for black women. Yeah, uh, I think that Mac is gonna get stuck with Jacob. That could that could be funny. Um, yeah, I don't know about Dennis and D. I guess Melissa. Somebody's gonna no. Frank is gonna be with Mister Johnson. Yeah, I could yeah. see that happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, f- yeah, dude, it'd be like somebody like randomly, like I don't know, like these guys, these people should not be in a school or something. I don't know. No, like yeah. they should not be. Do um, any of them like have children? Uh, D has given birth, but she was a surrogate. Oh, yeah. I feel like they could do something with that. I don't think they could do anything with that. I think I think they could do something with the fact that uh, they've worked at schools or that they they're spreading are awareness yeah. on why they're just going to spread awareness that Diddy is bad. That's that's going to be the episode, and that's I why they're going to schools. But yeah, so is I think it's going to be a really exciting episode. I can't wait to watch it. I think it'll be really fun. Yeah. Um. It, when Nicola was talking about the Air Force, it reminded me like, what if we were the Celsius Pod, the sitcom? Nicola destroys the Air Force. Yeah. What? He, he why would he destroy something he loves though? Yeah, exactly. What? That's the funny part. That's comedy. Uh, yeah, he does no. it on accident and then gets really depressed. Yeah. Peak um, comedy. The they can tell he's a gets future show writer. Nicola pisses off the US military. That is actually realistic. Aiden loses his hat. No! That would be the most tragic plotline. 
I would just I would just end it all, I think. Um yeah, no, but that's fun. Uh, uh Abbott's pretty is a cool cool show. Um Beck, solos. Solos, okay. I will do the one solo movie quickly. Um no, I can't even talk about it because Aiden's watching it. Shit. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Guys. I guess I'll talk about shows. So guys. Aiden really likes this one show. Do you guys know what this show is? Is it Among Us? Dines no. Game? No, that's you, Uri. Um, it's called The Amazing Digital Circus. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck, ain't wow. God. It's just ass. It's and not what's ass. great is I got 10 minutes into it, yeah. and then my Netflix kicked me out and was like, this device isn't a part of your household. Oh, and wow. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm it's going like, you're not in the same wa- state anymore. Watch temporarily. Click here to watch for the next 14 days. Oh, until it'll you reconnect you to your Netflix household Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. So I got completely kicked off my Netflix account. That's so really I can funny. no longer watch anything on Netflix. Oh, hey, so that's why you didn't watch the second episode of Good Band thing Band. Amazing Digital Circus is on YouTube. Oh, uh, you know, I think I have to watch it uh, where it's truly meant to be experienced, which is on, on YouTube. Netflix. No, on it's Netflix. meant to be experienced on YouTube. I, I right can't now. watch it, Aiden. Sorry about that. Unfortunate. And so is that the same issue with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Yes, but I was you, able you know to finish part three. on time. Disney Plus. You finished part three? Yeah. They, How they, did you they got to Egypt, and then the intro changed. Now I'm on part four, right? <laughs> no, no, I see the problem. You finished the first half. You know, it's part technically three. on oh. Disney Plus. Technically. I so opened Disney telling Plus, me and I'm like 90% Plus. of the way through, Aiden, right? They have, up, they have up to part five on Disney Plus. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it is on Crunchyroll. <laughs> I could be wrong. But I, well, I guess I can't watch it anymore, you know? Sad it's a good Aiden. show. Watch this shit, actually. <laughs> Beck, There's no I way feel... for me to watch it, Nicola. Beck, Beck, I literally am paying for Crunchyroll so you can watch JoJo. <laughs> okay, but let me get into my actual thoughts about JoJo. My, like, main problem with it is it just feels like the same shit is happening each episode. Yeah, because you're in part three! Yeah! So yeah, finish part three, and then you get to the good shit. Okay. Like part but four, also, like there's an actual mystery. It's like quite literally, like, guys, we're in the new town. What if there's a stand user here? Guys, that guy's a stand user. Now we have to fight his stand. Oh, no. Yeah, well, because all the stands in part three are punchy ghost. Or, like, I'm a car, or, like, I'm a gun. But wait till you get to part four when it's, like, my stand is actually a tomato. Mmm. And then it gets really good. But also, Aiden, you do realize I have to get through 22 more episodes of this. But those are good episodes. That's 11 hours, Aiden. The first episode of the next batch of episodes isn't even a fight. It's a full-on comedy episode. I know that it has Iggy in the title, and somehow oh, Iggy wait, yeah, doesn't right. realize, realize someone is still alive. Oh, well, that's, that's later. Not, that's that's the one episode. thing I know about the show. Is that Iggy no, does not realize that somebody's still alive. Yeah. I see, yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, JoJo has just been the show I've put on in the background while I'm doing other stuff because it's that kind of show for me. Okay. Um, how are you gonna know all of the cool abilities? Because they what yell happened? out, they yell out what their abilities are. What about the the sword that possesses you and makes you evil? I haven't What's had that point? yet. <laughs> Is that a? I guess that's a. Oh, yeah, that's, I guess you're right. I guess yeah. I forgot. No, that is that is an Egypt stand. I just kind of forgot. 
That's yeah. like an early eco stand. When there's a crowd of oh, because yeah, because it's one of the it's not when there's the a crowd parties. of seven people, but the seven people include a child, a bird, and a sword. Literally, there yeah. was a really cool one where it's like they're in a submarine and the yeah, stand can like yeah, that I one spawns that. two planet cards in Bellatro. All right, so I'm gonna throw you off a building. <laughs> Keep in mind, I am watching the show while I'm playing Bellatra, so I make this connection. <laughs> Great, okay. So, is that all we have for so Um, no. Because I Wish. want to talk about the Promised Neverland. You no. watch Promised like Neverland? Jackson's house? What? Michael Why Jackson's are you house? watching Promised Neverland? So, guys, the Emerson Anime Club is oh my meet God. weekly... And we watched Bro, the first... join the fucking... <laughs> Bro, join the anime club. I did join the anime club. And we watched the first three episodes. And I thought it was... <coughs> I thought it was really good. So the whole thing is like... It's chill. There's a bunch of children. They're at an orphanage. And they can't leave the fence. But... At the end of the first episode, we find out the orphanage is actually a human farm, and they harvest the kids to feed to demons. And then they wow. have to figure out how to escape. And it's cool. And this I'm sounds gonna... ass. No, nah, it's good. I was going to start watching. Uh, my, my girlfriend is seven years old, or whatever the fuck that one is called. <laughs> I have just randomly on Crunchyroll clicked on shows because they have such a long, stupid name, and I want to know what they're about. I watched, I started one recently that was called VTuber Legend, How I Went Viral After Forgetting to Turn Off My Stream. So you are just watching porn, I'm pretty sure. That is not porn! <laughs> All right. Whatever wow. you said. Okay, Beck, sure. Okay. Keep in mind, Aiden is the one watching, like, actual porn on his Crunchyroll. What what do you mean? You you literally got Crunchyroll to watch that one porn show, right? Well, no, Konosuba? that's just, it's just a Gooner anime. It's yeah, different. the Gooner yeah. anime. Okay. Sorry, I I mixed up a Gooner anime and porn. My bad. Beck, Those are very different. Beck, don't you know there's a Beck double standard on Celsius podcast? What's the double standard? When we do something, it's okay, but when Beck does Yeah, something, yeah. It's worse. Literally. And, no, Ernie was like, you know, like, fuck, you, you're alone, you're a virgin, no friends, going to the movie alone, and was like, I didn't you know, guys, back. going to the movies alone, kinda cool. It is kinda cool. It is kind of cool, Beck. I don't know about you, I quite like I do, it. I, I quite like it as well. I, I would highly recommend going to movies alone. Yeah, yeah no, it only is. men can do, though. So, you, he did send me a reel that was like a woman being like, you're telling me men go to movies alone at night? <laughs> it was really funny. Um, um, yeah, well, the the movie I went alone to, I saw it like 5.30, so it wasn't actually nighttime. Okay, but I, are we going on to the one group one we have? Because this is the last thing we have, right? Yeah. So, so Saturday night, guys. Saturday, Saturday night. night. We all gave it insanely high ratings. <laughs> so Beck, I Wait, knew can I, I, can I can I start before we start? Okay. Uh, before I saw this movie, I watched the first episode of SNL. Really? Yeah, because yeah, it's, it. it's free on Peacock. And guys, it's not very funny, like yeah. at all. But it changed like, comedy forever. But, like, I was Carlin so confused was by the Wolverine up. bit. <laughs> That's the whole, that is what the bit is. It is a, it's a, that one's funny. There's like four good bits in the first episode, but a lot of them are fairly boring. George Carlin's fairly boring. Both of like the stand up hosts are boring, like him and the other girl. Not fun. The musical acts are pretty good. Even like Jim Henson's thing wasn't very funny, which is really sad. Let me tell you something. The moment I saw Jim Henson in the show, I'm like, I know why Aiden gave it five stars. 
That's Thanks. not even why I gave it five that stars. That's why you gave like, it five three, stars. He was there for like three seconds. Beck, Beck, were you shocked that Cousin Greg was playing Andy Kaufman and Jim Henson? It was, it was oh, he was very playing, weird. He was, playing, he was playing both. Yeah, he played both. Oh, the, really? That's the cool. accent he had in the, in the, in the character hole in the box. So in this, so essentially, for those, let's talk about it. So formerly yeah. known as SNL 1975, they changed it to Saturday Night. Um, this so it covers the first night, be the third, the, the ninety minutes before the first Saturday Night Live ever appeared, and so there's a lot of yeah. tensions. It's I thought a lot of I thought a lot of it's a, a bunch of long t- long takes. I thought the entire movie in the beginning was gonna be a long take. I also thought that, but because it, it went on for like twenty minutes, and I yeah. was like, this shit is so awesome. And yeah. then it kind of fizzled but out, but they kept, they kept doing long they kept, takes. They do quite a few long takes in the movie. I have, I have no idea how hard it was to, like, plan this. The thing, no, <laughs> he, so he, he, yeah. the director, Jason Reitman, he planned it for, like, two months beforehand, and he used, like, he choreographed it with stunt, with, like, stand-in people, and then he did yeah. it, essentially covers, and there's a lot of tensions now, since this is, like, the first time something that ever went on. Because nowadays, we know SNL is, like, the comedy behemoth of nbc now yeah but in the yeah. past when it first started there was just a bunch of random 20 year olds kind of just doing comedy and so he's born is essentially the focal point of the movie and we get to see the sort of the movie through his eyes and there's a the, it, the movie does it really well by bouncing a lot of the different characters in the movie I i'd say it, like like all the characters have something to do minus moment, all yeah. of minus all of the women but still like all all of the characters are doing something like I, yeah i do like, really yeah. like the contrast between the characters where it's like some will are like putting their entire life into making sure the show gets on and then some of them are being like eh, hey let's smoke the weed <laughs> yeah but, um and so it's it's sort of like a very thrilling ride to see how like this sort of comedy legend was born and so like i don't know how accurate the movie is i don't think it was that accurate i assume i I I looked i looked it up a lot of the stuff that happens in the movie doesn't happen in the for 90 minutes before the movie i I, I assume that but did happen like Like, almost every no before before it aired but most everything actually does happen at some point in history but you just condense it to like sort of before just to make it more exciting, but like yeah. still, all of it is pretty. Is like pretty, yeah. On pretty. There was definitely stuff that happened that day. Like there was definitely the lighting issues, and there was definitely like the bricklaying, and all that stuff was definitely that day. But and, then it's and like the guy almost like not putting the show on. That was that day, right? I maybe I, I feel I don't like remember. that's a bit too Hollywoody for that guy to not be like I don't know if we're gonna put. It. I feel like that that might be a fabrication a bit. I feel like yeah I said beforehand. Oh. I, I, but actually the Jim, the Jim Belushi thing, he only signed it like five minutes before the show. Yeah. John yeah. Belushi, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I will say like, uh, well, this is near the end of the movie. I'll talk about it later. Um, but let's just, let's kind of get into it. So it starts off like with, um, somebody like giving I out. Could, yeah. Tickets. I could barely Do track the names. <laughs> they I don't remember hard. it. Yeah, Finn, Phil and Wolfhard is giving out tickets to SNL to free, and Lorne Michaels comes down to meet Andy Kaufman to bring him up to the set. And this is when we get the first long tracking shot where we're introduced to pretty much every every character in the movie. Yeah. Um, and just shit is going wrong all over the place. And Lorne Michaels is freaking out. And he's like twice the run times so when he needs to figure out what to cut. Yeah, he's yeah. at three hours, and they needed to cut it down to one hour. Um, and something that's really interesting is the fact that, um, so, as I mentioned before, Nicholas Braun, who plays Cousin Greg on Succession, he played Andy Kaufman and Jim Henson, and the director did it because, like, he ha- he was going to get Benny Safdie to play Andy Kaufman, but, um, he, like, he was directing a movie, so he dropped down, so he was thinking, you know, in SNL, they, people play multiple characters, so why not have an actor in the movie play multiple sort of character so it because it embraces the snl spirit yeah. yeah i like that and that's fair but and so that was pretty interesting but continuated um but he's basically uh michaels is running around stuff's going wrong he's with his um not wife what's her name again um 
Rosie. Rosie yeah. Schuster. Yeah, her. He's like, hey, do you want your name in the credits or do you want Rosie Michaels? Because they were married, but now they're not really Dan Aykroyd. But I'm not really sure. Um, so that's all. That's a whole problem. And then uh, just everybody's coming at Michael at Michaels. They're like, hey, what are we going to do about this? And Billy Crystal's like, hey, I need five minutes. And Jim Henson's like, hey, I don't have the script and everybody hates me. And <laughs> and things are just going terrible, terrible. And Michael, my, uh, Lauren is getting pitched like a, a Polaroid camera, which feels just like a funny like bit at the moment, but does come back, which is it cool. It does come back, yeah. Um, but just a lot of stuff happens very quickly. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to like recap this movie because it's just shit goes wrong. Lights fall. Sound is bad. Uh, but then you have different characters. Like you have, um, uh, what's, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Garrett Morris. Like you have him who's like a very prolific actor playwright. He's like, Hey, I don't know why I'm on this show. That's very weird. So his whole thing is doing that. Identity crisis, yeah. Yeah. And, like, John Belushi is like, I don't want to be here. And And then you got, like, like the surprise J.K. Simmons as Milton Berle pulling out his dick. Yeah. Yeah, that that was cool. That was funny. Yeah, Um, I love J.K. Simmons. But the movie is pretty much just uh, Michael Lawrence, or Lawrence Michael trying to, like, get shit together and it really falls apart super quickly and the last like the last like 20 minutes before the show happens everything is bad and this is one of my favorite is everything one of my favorite tropes in media is everything is so shit but the last five seconds everything comes together yeah that's a good Mm -hmm. trope you know what's that i kind of like i i have this sort of thing where it's like i'm i'm always 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 shocked by movies that take place over a like, limited amount of time like one day or like a few hours yeah. like they always like portray so many things happening in a few hours that's kind of insane yeah that's almost unrealistic but it's a movie so you can kind of get away with it but it's like always like insane so that's what i wrote for my review because that is so much shit to happen in 90 minutes that's yeah I, say, I, I, I just, i'm kind of uh, yeah i really like just like my favorite like type of character is one who's just like unbleeding like motivation towards a goal, and I feel like yeah. Lauren Michaels really had that throughout this entire movie. Like he was Definitely. doing whatever it took to get this show on the air. Aside from like the last, like his last kind of defeat moment. But yeah, yeah but then the, he comes back stronger. The yeah. point of no return, you know, as they say. Yeah, mm-hmm. but something I also because this is a movie that we know all this knowledge fifty years later from SNL, so I it felt like there was also sort of this idea the idea of the future baked within the movie. So how we yeah. thought, like we know how all these actors end up at this mm-hmm. point, like sort of like the thing with Chevy Chase was kind of interesting. How like he was like yeah, because yeah. we already know he's like a giant asshole and he's still an asshole in this movie. Yeah. And uh, but you really feel for a lot of the characters and like how they fit in their place of this sort of comedic NBC corporate ecosystem, which was really cool. Yeah, and it's just like a very thrilling sort of um, gut punching kind of ride. Is like you follow this sort of chaos, very sort of like organized chaos in a way. A, a Definitely, movie. yeah. And um, did, it, it was just awesome. Yeah, I, it was really good. That seemed like you I, wouldn't like it. Yeah, I no. For me, I just like was watching the trailers and it like didn't feel like a ten out of ten movie. You know, that's fair. For me, I felt like I from like the when when I hear the beating sound in the trailer, that's when it kind of hit for me. It's like, oh, this is gonna be like a very intense like time clicking movie for me. Yeah, I'd say I wish the time was actually synced up. Yeah, like I would. It would be so awesome if it was ninety minutes a movie. I, I was know, timing I it. I they, was they, timing they, it. <laughs> they did a very good thing where they released the movie on the day that the first SNL episode released. Like the oh, movie was released cool. on October 11th, and that was the first episode when it came out. So that's cool that they did that. But I, they should have they should have done a 90 minute movie 
that takes place over 90 minutes. I would have been blown yeah. away if they managed to do that. They, but it would be too much for 90 minutes. So it isn't like two yeah. hours. Yeah. But I thought, I thought like, the movie and the ending with, like, the Wolverines, like, having seen the first episode, the Wolverines bit, it does take a little bit for John Belushi to come actually on stage. Oh, um, really? So they, it doesn't take that long. Hold on. Let me, let me actually, like, see how long it takes um, <laughs> before he walks. Oh, well, it, t- it takes, like, five seconds. It, t- it takes, like, yeah. Five to six seconds before him, before John Belushi actually comes down the stairs, and they just like they drag that out as like a tense moment, and I think that's a really cool way to play into like, here's something that actually happened. Here's how we're making it dramatic by just kind of hyperbolizing it, but it's still mostly based in fic- in fact. Yeah, yeah, and and I, else- and I like I like that they played out the entire bit. Yeah. I think that's a, that was a really good way to end the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So many ways, like because we all know about that, like iconic tonight on and on Saturday Night Live, and so it was a really way to show the first time it was ever done. And that's, yeah, that's how yeah that's how they do it in, in the first episode is they have Chevy Chase come out. And actually, but the thing is, about Chevy Chase, he was actually going to become the new, the Weekend Update guy. They they put that like well before the actual. Yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah but they put that like five seconds before the. In the show, starts, yeah. And I do yeah. like how he they lose like the lose the cue cards and have the and other writer like, come in. Yeah. yeah. And I, the uh, movie was just like everything was even though it didn't all happen, then it they like rounded it all up to make to like have it be this like condensed, this all makes sense and could very much be plausible. Yeah. Kind of. Because even fucking sense. Dan Aykroyd was on Twitter, like, saying, this movie is accurate. Yeah. He, cool. was, he was he was saying, like, the character relations and how everyone was. Because they was kind of portray him as, in the movie as, like, a sleazeball, kind of, which is interesting. Yeah. Which is very, uh, which is very funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish I watched more of season one of SNL, because I think a lot of the... A lot of the there's a lot of stuff in the movie that's just from later in season one, I think. Yeah. Like the um, the white like the shotgun shotgun. I'm gonna get a shotgun and kill all the white. Yeah, that that's a that's a famous that's a famous bit from Garris Mor- Morrison. So it's cool that it made up in there. Um, but like the uh, like when they're hitting on Dan Aykroyd as the when the like the ladies are dressed as the workmen or whatever. Right. Like oh, that's yeah. that's not in the first episode. Yeah, and, and then so there's it, a couple of. I I don't think it's not, it doesn't even be necessarily accurate as long as you get the vibe of the of those early days. It's good. Yeah, yeah. like when I, 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 when I, I would yeah. prefer a biopic to be inaccurate and good than rather than accurate and bad. You know, yeah. true. As long as you like yeah. feel something for the characters and like you can imagine what yeah. it was like back then. I feel like you get the general premise. Like you feel like the you feel like what it's like to be in that time. I feel like it's good enough. What like, thing I, I do want to say, like, from experience, um, earlier this week on, like, Thursday night, I actually worked on, like, a TV show for Emerson. Biopic? No, not a biopic, but it was, like, a live show. And, like, you could feel the tension with everyone. Like, I was in the control room. I was handling the graphics. Like, the tension of, like, we're getting closer and closer to 8 o'clock and we have to go live. Yeah. So like, I could. Uh, it doesn't matter. I right. It's better that's eight o'clock. Yeah, I, I, you could feel. I was like stressed in the theater for these characters. Like they really captured it really well. It was amazing. It was. It's. It, I. I know. I say it a lot, but it is now my. What is your favorite movie, movie of twenty twenty four? I. Th- it is now. It, I feel yeah. like. I, I know. Like I. Keep, has, I. I feel like it has best picture energy with it. It does. I keep, yeah. I keep. Switching up on my things, but I think that's a I think that's good that I'm changing my yeah, opinions no. and stuff. You're watching a ton of good movies. There's nothing bad about that. And what's something yeah. about what's something interesting about this movie is sort of like the early SNL days kind of showed like promising new talent, and this movie showed like a lot of like new uh, voices in the industry we're having today. Like a lot yeah. of them are up and coming I actors. Didn't, I didn't recognize any of the names. And so now, aside from like Willem Dafoe or J.K. Simmons, yeah. And so now we're going to see like, but they old... were literally playing like characters of the old time, you know? Yeah, like, that is true. Yeah, and I'm just looking at this. 
It's so hard to believe Ricky Stucky is now number nine on your 2024 yeah, he's movies. Kinda, right? He's kind of going down. Like you were, you were fighting so hard as like that's my movie of the year for six months, and now eight other movies have passed it. Well, I'm trying. I'm just trying. I'm keeping it in the top ten. <laughs> okay, yeah. Crazy, Aiden. But like the general reviews are like, th- like three point seven to four, which is kind of interesting for the movie. Wow, yeah, you put, you put Trav above above Ricky Stanicki. Yeah, I like Trav. I don't know. I w- what I was really expecting were cameos from like SNL alum. Yeah, I was very I, surprised. I was kind of surprised that there just wasn't. Like I didn't need any, but I was I was kind of surprised that we didn't get like a Keenan Thompson cameo. Yeah, I or, feel like, like that would probably cheapen the movie a bit, though. Oh, definitely, definitely. But I'm just surprised there weren't any. Yeah, and this in the soundtrack was just ooh, oh, so I love the soundtrack. good. The soundtrack was so amazing and really fit with the vibe of the whole movie. Yeah, I feel like they also they did have an insanely star-studded cast, um, mm-hmm. especially like for like side characters, like when they go into the bar and they and who, I I forget who it is, but like the guy Zy- that, Zybel. yeah, Zybel. the guy the guy doing stand up was a was a pretty famous actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, you know, he actually met um the writer, and like like way later, I think, or way earlier, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't on the night of, because that would have been crazy. But, I, did, uh, I did I did learn that uh the who who did J.K. Simmons character? Who was he again? Milton Burl. Right. Uh it Uncle? was actually he did actually show his talk to people. He did actually then. do that. Not not then, not to those people, but he did do it and it was eleven inches. So <laughs> that's very funny that they put that in there. They re- they re- did a good job at making the people who turn out to be assholes later be assholes na- then. Yeah, like they weren't they weren't like afraid of showing how these people were really. Yeah, and yeah. Like, they I were, like, I wonder what like the the cast from that age thinks about the movie because I know Dan Aykroyd likes it. I mean, he mm-hmm. wasn't like showing the worst side of the movie. There's definitely people were showing worse. I imagine Chevy Chase probably doesn't like it as much. Yeah, but um, no, this movie I, like it. I feel like it humanizes the characters. It doesn't really pass judgment or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I really like the John Belushi part where it was like, where like the first like part of the movie, it was like we really need John Belushi. And we're like, why do we need John Belushi? And then he does the um weekend yeah, update, yeah. and then like everyone is like dying of laughter. And we're like, yeah, we need John Belushi. And then yeah, he, he, quits... he isn't he isn't in that weekend update though. In the first yeah. episode. Okay. Yeah. But like Which I still show... think it was cool, like they they set up like that that they needed him, so it made a lot more sense like why he quit. Because he was also on the edge of quitting, and then he got the fucking Polaroid ad stuffed in his face. Yeah. And then it was nice that he came back to take that set photo at least. <laughs> Yeah. Like when they were like, does anyone have a camera? I'm like, <gasps> that yeah. was the rule of thirds. Um, True. But yeah, I think great movie. Nicola, watch it. Oh, fine. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to watch it Friday, but I just watched it today so I could talk about it on the pod. Because like yeah. my dad's a big SNL guy. So I wanted to watch it with him because I, I want to I wanna, like get the perspective of someone who's like, a big SNL fan of like what they thought of the movie. Are you it with I your wa- dad? Yeah. When I walked out of the theater, uh, there was only it was only me and like these two older people. And I went up to one of them. And I was like, "Hey, how accurate were the uh, were the characters in this movie?" And they're like, "Oh, they were pretty accurate." We started watching like around 1979, so like four years after. And they're like, "They these were like spot on, like exactly who these people were." That's kind of crazy. Aiden just. How accurate was it? Well, it was just me and some. It was just me and two other people in the theater, so I felt like it was okay. And then they gladly talked to me, and we were all we were just like surprised. Wait, something that was really weird that happened to me was for the My Hero Academia movie. As I was walking out, there were like theater employees with iPads handing them out to people, like getting like feedback for the movie. And you got one. I didn't get one. I was so pissed. 
Because I'm like, they need to know my thoughts about the My Hero Academia move. Um, okay, well, I think that's our night. Anything else anyone wants to say? No. How is really everyone's no. Celsius Oscar movie? No progress. No progress. We're gonna, you're going to have to start getting on that, guys. Early, I'm practicing my script writing, and then I'm going to, like, put it all together in the Celsius Oscars movie. Yeah. Well, what's the rec? It's be I, a recommend, I recommend. I recommend. Yeah, but I want to recommend something else. I recommend The Departed. Watch The Departed. Mm. Okay. Good movie, The Departed. All um, right, guys. I think this might be the first time we finish the pod before the movie Aiden has on has finished. I guess at I gotta for, wait until it finishes. Time. Yeah. So. We're- we're, not we're gonna at the final for, sequence. This is like the final. Vi- but you got to like the last ten minutes. Do you guys want to go for fifteen more minutes? I could do sure. this. Sure. Let's cook. Let's let's cook for a little bit. Okay. Uh, back, can, back, yeah, back, this is, I can just fast forward the movie. No, 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 no. So no. no. So no. You gotta see him go. Yeah, you know he's doing it. This is Celsius pod after hours. No. When he does that. Oh, oh the movie's over. We oh, did it. We did it. Fuck. All yeah. right. Always hey. Celsius, and thanks for listening. Thanks for I, watching. I got you on camera. This podcast is anti-suicide PSA as well. Yes. I guess so. Uh, don't kill don't yourself. Don't commit suicide. I got you on camera. You'll miss the next episode of the pod. Oh, no. <laughs> and you wouldn't want to miss that, would you?